Hello everyone and welcome to a Muse for You video tutorial. Uh, in this video tutorial I'll be going over the new updates uh, of Adobe Muse. It's Adobe Muse CC 2014.3 and the update was released on February 11th, 2015. So I'm going to go over the, the, uh, the updates in sequence. Uh, the first update, if we go to the release notes here, um, yeah, I think they're called uh, yeah, the full release notes. Uh, the first update is this drag a master page to add a page to your site. So if we go to the plan view, we can literally just drag uh, from the masters right down here and create a page from that master. And so if we have uh, master A, master B, master C, uh, you know, A master, B master, C master, we can create a B master, a C master page, you know, and, and it tells you the master pages. Right underneath. Okay, the second thing, the second update, uh, is now if you have a page that you don't want to export to your final uh, website you just right click and where it says export page you click on export page and it changes color the uh, the page in the plan view changes color so you don't um, so you can see that this page is not going to be exported alright so fairly simple right click uh, export page to export it and then uncheck it click again to uncheck it and it changes a different color so you know it's not going to be exported into the final website alright now the next one is notice that uh, collapse pages expand on adding a child page so for instance if I have uh, a bunch of pages you know I have an, a bunch of pages in my plan view right? and then I collapse them right up here so now all those pages are collapsed but if I right click and click on new child page it uh, expands so I can see all the uh, other pages that were with that were underneath uh, this first page in the plan view uh, so just you know little little things to maybe help with your workflow uh, I never quite use that myself but if you do uh, that might be useful for you Okay, so now moving on, we're going to go into design a little bit. Uh, these are design time enhancements. So let's say we style some text. So I'll go in here um, and I pick the text tool and I do some text and I say, uh, you know, this is some text. Okay. And you can't, let me move it so you can see it a little bit. So right there, this is some text and I'm going to make it really cool to style it kind of really nice uh, 72 change the color to red alright so I just styled this text alright very nice now let's say I'm not happy with the styling and I want to revert it right back to just text how I originally wrote it I just right click and click on clear all styling and bam it reverts back to uh, the text with no styling that I just wrote in the beginning Okay, so moving on to update number five, uh, it's go to style use, um, and you can read it here, but basically if I create some text, um, I just write this is some text, highlight it, uh, hit command A to highlight, uh, change the text, kind of make it bigger, and change the color, there we go. So, so I've just styled this text, and now if I you know select this element with the text in it, um, and just click on this create a new style from the attributes applied uh, it creates the style here and I just select it um, so now this element has the attribute style uh, applied to it and if I copy uh, this element and paste it on another page so I just opened in my plan view I went to untitled 2 and pasted that same element in untitled 2 you can actually track where you use uh, the style so um, and I also have to, you know, click here to give this graphic style the the property of style by clicking, you know, I can click none or style. And basically, what this uh, now what I can do is if I have a really large website, I can see what elements have the style, and I can right click, and I can click on go to style use, and I can either go to the home, and it says home contains one use, or the current page contains this 
text frame called this is some text and if I click on home contains one use it takes me to the home page and it selects uh, that element with that same style so pretty cool could help with the workflow again uh, I've never quite used something like this but I I could see maybe how it could come in handy if you have a large website I mean you can do it with bullets characters graphics or paragraphs across your website um, so it's interesting like now you can just click on you know go to style and yeah same with the paragraph I, I'm assuming yeah any of these you can now see where you've applied those styles to, to different elements alright now moving on to number six uh, so let's say uh, we want to clear a widget so I'm gonna delete this here and uh, just insert widget so object insert widget uh, let's insert a state uh, actually yeah let's enter insert a state button alright so I'm gonna just type in some text and now if I want to clear what's in this widget uh, I can right click right click and click on uh, clear widget contents okay and it just removes what was in this widget um, I didn't expect to, for, for it to remove everything but it uh, removed kind of everything in that widget so like if you have um, object insert widget uh, let's do uh, tabbed panels and if we click on right click clear widget contents and it just clears pretty much everything that was in that widget alright so that's pretty cool it could help with the workflow if you want to just you know uh, clear everything that was in the widget and start from scratch you know start from like a blank slate uh, rather than having all the those properties that Muse had uh, before alright so I think that was number six moving on to number seven uh, asset management okay so um, okay so kind of the same thing as you know go go to style like that we did in the previous update so now if you have an asset like I'm gonna go to my assets uh, panel so I go to window assets and then if I right click on this asset I can go to uh, let's see so wherever um, you know if I want to go to a partic particular element that was using any of my assets uh, I just right click go to asset use and I can click on rectangle um, you know on the current page or like if I had another if I just copied this rectangle and now I have two rectangles so I can go to the asset you know and it switches between the different assets that's using um, the different elements that's using the asset so yeah just go to your assets panel and you can if you you're using multiple instances of an asset uh, whether it's an image or something or an you know whatever it, it is usually it'll be an image um, you click on go to asset use and you can go to the different uh, places where your asset is being used moving on to update number eight there's an update in the text um, so let me go back to my home page here uh, if I write some text you know this is some text and now I have the options uh, of you know formatting my text uh, in different ways oops sorry about that so I'm just gonna let me make this a little bit bigger so you can see it and all right 20 let's do something like that all right now if we go to we highlight this and we go to text we now have the options of making it all lowercase uh, you know T to the like kind of like an exponent or uh, yeah this is a superscript and a subscript so we can make it a subscript or a superscript and we can make it all capital or all lowercase or yeah superscript or subscript alright so we have some new options here in the text um, panel alright so moving on to update number nine uh, also, the, the, they updated handling missing fonts, so that's good. Okay, so now we have a content panel um, right here. So yeah, this is new. I haven't seen this before. So you go to Window, uh, and you go to Content, and you click the plus symbol, and you can add, you know, um, you know, this is some content. This is some content. 
uh, actually, yeah, we'll just say content. All right. So now if we do text, if we do a text box and then we can, yep, we can just copy whatever content was in here and copy it to another text box. And it has a little content tab here. So like, again, you know, create a text box and then just click content and it fills in the text box with this is some content. So I'll do another example. I'll say, okay, uh, here is another example. And, you know, just maybe change the font. Uh, it doesn't, I don't think it matters if you change the font, it doesn't copy the styling. So then um, I just click the plus button here uh, in the content panel. And then that's called content two. So now again, if I do the text box and I say content two, it fills it with, you know, here's another example. So, and I'm going to, um, just so you can see the text a little bit better. Yeah, here we go. So here's um, here's another example. Here's not, that's content two, and content one is this is some text. So you know, I create a text box, select it, go to content, content one, or I can do content two. You see, it changes the text there. Pretty useful if you have like a header or content that you know you're going to use multiple times in your website the content panel makes it really easy to do so. All right, and now another uh, preview, uh, another update, uh, I think I'm on number 10, uh, is preview mode enhancement. Yeah, so um, let me go to website and go to phone, and I'll say copy desktop, copy browser, so, okay. All right, so if I go here, I'm now in um, iPhone mode, go to preview, yeah, I can now preview iPhone 5S, iPhone 6, iPhone 6 Plus, Nokia Lumia 1020, Samsung Galaxy uh, S5. All right, so we have new preview modes. We have the iPhone 6 and the iPhone 6 Plus. Uh, that's when we're creating our website in phone mode. Okay, and I'm gonna delete these, uh, these panels here. We don't really need them. Yeah, that's fine. And close that and that. And that. All right, so uh, let's see, that might have been update 10 or 11. Um, and then we just have some performance improvements that you can read here. Um, let's see, uh, we can show or hide frame edges. Uh, you know, you just go to view. So I'm in design view, I go to view and I can click on, um, where is it, uh, show. Yeah, hide frame edges or you know show frame edges. So if I click on view show frame edges, it shows me the edges of the different elements in my website. Or I can go to view hide frame edges. All right, and we have some auto detect FTP settings, uh, which is good for security. I think uh, Adobe Muse just updated their, updated their FTP security settings. Uh, we have high DPI support for Microsoft Windows. And we have some Adobe Muse CC for enterprise and education. All right, so those are pretty much the updates. Um, oh yeah, with the, uh, you can toggle the frame edges with Control H for Windows or Command H for Mac. Uh, that's another uh, tidbit there. So I'm actually going to, oh, and another is redirect using Business Catalyst or JavaScript. I don't use Business Catalyst, so I, I'll just let you kind of read that there. Um, yeah, performance improvements with WMUs, website performance improvements, that's always good. Uh, yeah, but pretty much I'll let you read all of this. Um, I'll put a link uh, of to this in the description area. Um, also in the description area, I have uh, web hosting, Bluehost web hosting. Uh, I use them for all my websites. I trust them a lot. Uh, their commu uh, customer service, excuse me is amazing. Um, I also have a $1 photo club. You can get amazing f uh, photographs for just $1. Uh, I remember, you know, going to some other websites and they were charging 20, 50, 70 bucks for one photo. And uh, I can go on dollar photo club and find professional quality images um, for, you know, for $1. Um, and there's just a little sign up process and it, it's just great if you're designing websites. Uh, I also have uh, a a link to uh, Muse themes. Uh, they have awesome widgets and pretty cool themes. So, 
you know, if you need like different widgets that do a lot in Adobe Muse, definitely get Muse themes. Um, and let's see what else, Muse themes. Uh, I have my Skillshare link. Uh, I teach classes on Skillshare. It's my whole class on Skillshare. Um, I just created my new website for Muse for You. Um, it's Muse for You Shop, and you can find all these links on the website. Um, you know, all the links that I just mentioned, I'm affiliated with them. So, um, you know, these are all uh, services that I use uh, and, and recommend if you're designing websites. Uh, so, yeah, and, you know, please subscribe because uh, every time you subscribe, you get invited to my private community where we help each other. Uh, with Adobe Muse, we help each other learn Adobe Muse, we get to share what we've created, and it's just a nice community to to help each other, um, and yeah, and if you need one-on-one -on -one assistance with building a website, uh, let me know, I, I am open to doing that, just, you know, we'll talk about it, give me, a, send me a message through YouTube, or email, or through my website, or yeah, there's, I have many ways to get in contact with me, um, so yeah, that's pretty much it for this uh, tutorial. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Oh, and I reached a thousand subscribers a few days ago. I'm super excited about that. Didn't expect that, uh, but I'm really happy that it's happening and I'm doing a lot to make this channel, you know, like the best channel to learn Adobe Muse. Uh, so stay tuned for that and yeah, definitely subscribe to get updates, uh, all the updates and stuff with, with my channel and all the things I'm doing with Adobe Muse. All right, so thank you and I'll see you in the next video.